My name's Mark Vernon and I teach philosophy here at the Idler Academy. Why philosophy? Well, it's really about life and that's what drew me to philosophy first of all. It's this compound word, Philo and Sophia, the love of wisdom. But the important thing about wisdom is that it's a practical kind of intelligence. For the ancient Greeks, which is where we begin our philosophy course here at the Idler Academy, for the ancient Greeks it was how to live well in life, how to flourish, a kind of practical intelligence. As much what the archer does when he fires his arrow at the, at the target as what we do when we sit down and think. Now the love bit too is very important because love means it's a desire for something you, you lack. You have it in part, you have a sense of how to live life, but you want to develop that and explore it. You desire more. So that's why the ancient Greek philosophers were called philosophers. It's not that they knew it all, but they threw themselves into life. And we try to explore that very much as a living thing here at the Idler Academy. Now, Socrates is our pivotal figure. Socrates changed it all for us in the West. And in fact, you know already quite a lot about Socrates. He's kind of inside all our heads. Why might that be? It was because when people first met Socrates, they had this sense that they knew a lot about life, but that there was more they might know. And if they could only discover that, then life might grow and expand for them, and they might grow and expand as individuals. So we think about Socrates as the pivotal figure, and then how he was responded to by a range of schools in the ancient world, the ancient philosophy schools. They literally set up places where they taught others. It was a way of life. It was very much a transformation of the soul, not just an engagement with ideas, although it was that as well. They lived together, men and women in fact, and slaves too. They were very progressive for the ancient world. And we explore all that, thinking about how we too might develop a taste for this philosophy, as much as just learn the arguments and the facts. So let me just give you a quick run through what we'll cover in the course at the Idler Academy when we look at these different schools. We think first of all about Socrates and Plato. Plato gives us our best image of Socrates. And if there was one word which captured his encounter, um, it would be the word love, I think. Plato realised that we have this desire, this passion, this quest for life that runs through us. And when it goes well, it makes for life. It, it, it inspires our creativity, our desire, our questing. But the trouble is that it's uh, an uneasy thing. It can unsettle and frustrate us as much as that. And in fact, in extreme case, perhaps even ruin a life. You just know this if you fall in love and it hasn't quite worked out. It's that kind of experience, but blown up into life as a whole. And so Plato's way of life is how we can, can garner and nurture that in order that it makes for our well-being. Plato met Socrates and was taught by him for about 20 years. Aristotle, the next person we consider on the course at the Idler Academy, was taught by Plato for another 20 years or so. It gives you a taste of how long this training was. But what was different perhaps between Plato and Aristotle was that Aristotle lived in a world after Alexander the Great. He taught Alexander the Great, actually. And Alexander the Great, as he moved out, he sent back lots of examples of things to Aristotle. And Aristotle collected them. He collected plants and he collected animals, but also he collected things like types of friendship or the ways that cities were put together and how they ran. And he thought about that and came up with his philosophy, his quest to know more about how these things work in human life. We think about Aristotle. Now we think also about a couple of further schools, the Epicureans and the Stoics. Now these are words which are well known to us today, to be an Epicurean, to be a Stoic, but they get twisted in the centuries between now and back then. And so we try and get back to the heart of what their philosophy was really about. It's, it's quite important actually, because for example, Epicureans were into pleasure, but they thought that less is more, not more is more. Epicurus thought that he could be as happy as Zeus feasting on Mount Olympus if all he had was a glass of water and a barley cake. That in a way was the goal of their, their school, to learn how to seriously and profoundly, not just because you think it's a good idea, but genuinely to enjoy the simple pleasures in life, the glass of water, and also things like friendship were very important for them. So that's the Epicureans. We also think about Stoics. Stoicism is very, very influential actually in the modern world. Quite a number of therapies are based on Stoicism. But what the Stoics thought was that you need to learn about this practical wisdom, this intelligence, um, in everyday life. They were called the Stoics, not because they were stoical, that's the sort of misunderstanding, but because Zeno, the founder of the Stoics, 
taught in the Stoa, which was the ancient Athenian marketplace. He thought actually that it's a little encounters in life where you learn this practical intelligence. And if you can learn it then, then when something very big happens and maybe difficult, then you're resourced and equipped in order to know how to do that and deal with it. We've done the Epicureans, we do the Stoics on the course at the Idler Academy, and then we come finally to a couple of other schools which are uh, as quirky as they are interesting and important for that reason. We think about the skeptics and the cynics. Now, skeptics doesn't mean they were skeptical. Um, it meant actually that they developed techniques of suspending what you thought you know in order that something new might emerge. Um, in some ways, they were the ancient artists of the ancient world. Um, they, a bit like the artist that doesn't want to know too much but wants stuff to emerge from the unconscious, you might say. The ancient skeptics were a bit like that. And they developed, again, a way of life, a way of living together, a way of really transforming your soul, not just learning stuff in your head, that was, became known as the sceptical school. And then finally we come to the cynics. Now the cynics were the shock jocks of the ancient world, you might say, the performance artists. And they thought that the way of moving us to this edge of what we know, in order that we might learn something different, was in order to be jolted, to be quite shocked by what they got up to, um, various things which we explore. And then the idea is that our conventions sort of drop down a bit. And in that moment of uncertainty, we get the Socratic feeling again, the sense of coming to the edge of life, but in order that we can grow into the, the new things that might emerge. So we have these six or so schools, which we consider on the course, pivoting around Socrates. I came to ancient philosophy because I was really looking for ways to think about life in this modern plural setting that we live in today. And the modern plural setting is mirrored, I think, in the ancient world. Um, a lot of experiments with life going on, Socrates being the pivotal figure then and still living on in us now. I think on the course that we get a taste for this inside us as well as learning the facts which are important. And I would invite you too to come and join us here at the Idler Academy to think and learn about this wisdom, this practical intelligence which we call ancient Greek philosophy. It's more than just facts, although we learn facts. It's more than just arguments, although arguments do help us to discern what's going on. Really, it's about life. That's the thing that drew me to ancient philosophy and I think will draw you too. Thank you.